thank you for making this commitment and sharing with us today. Thank you. So the floor is yours. Thank you. So yes, today we want to talk about uh, diverse learners and using proverbs and stories. And I'm really going to spend the bulk of this presentation explaining why uh, we need to use proverbs and stories to enhance student learning and to help build so that you can then uh, modify the approaches that I use to suit your class needs. Um, so are, is everyone here, I, I know we have nursing and CSD, are you allied health, science, allied health? Okay, so I'll cater it to, and law, okay, okay, and law. So I'll try to make sure that I speak to um, those settings as well. So I'm a speech language pathologist by trade and um, I practice in DC and in Maryland, and uh, where I'm licensed to practice in DC and in Maryland, and I'm certified by the American Speech Language Hearing Association. And so, speech language pathology is also an allied health profession where we work in either medical settings or in educational settings. I consider myself a pediatric educational speech language pathologist, so much that what I have in this uh, slide really does speak to children, but it is based off of health science concepts. So just, this is just my disclosure statement that I'm a salaried employee of Howard University and I have no other financial or non-financial relationships to disclose. And so let's start with just really understanding that America is ethnically, culturally, linguistically diverse. We know that. We know America's diverse and we know that, it, that diversity is growing every day. We're a melting pot of languages. And so we have to keep that in mind as we think about the university setting. Now, um, one of the issues with language is that there's, there's this uh, battle between what is fair when we think about language. And language and culture, we're, we're really going to dig into that in this presentation. And we're also going to talk about language in terms of in the classroom setting and how that affects student learning. So again, the bulk of this is going to be really geared towards language, but within a cultural context. Okay, so just really quickly, we should already know this. I took this from the About Howard page and it's linked above. Um, any reference that I have here is gonna be hyperlinked within the PowerPoint slide. Uh, so Howard, of course, is a leader in STEM fields. We know that. We know that Howard uh, produces um, the most African-American undergraduates who later earn science and engineering doctoral degrees. We also know that Howard is nationally ranked in terms of their social work programs, the business and uh, the school of business and the program of communication sciences and disorders, which leads to a master's degree or PhD in speech language pathology. Also, the College of Medicine is a national leader, health science division, including nursing, uh, pharmacy, dentistry, and allied health sciences are all nationally recognized for the caliber of these programs. And what makes Howard interesting is that, of course, it's an HBCU. And usually among the top ranked schools, we don't see HBCUs with such high rankings as Howard University. So that places us into a unique context in that we have um, an ethnically diverse student body, but it, it's ethnically diverse in an upside down manner in that the majority here is gonna be blacks or African Americans with 84.1%. So this was taken from the fall um, 2016 class statistics from the 2016-2017 um, academic annual report is where I got this data. And so again, as you can see, with 9,000 university-wide students and 84% of them being black or African American, we already can expect that there will be some cultural differences between what the standard American mainstream culture dictates for learning and what we may or may not see in the Howard University classrooms. Okay, because the, the population, while it's diverse, it's diversely different in that the majority is blacks and African Americans who technically only you know, make up less than 20% of the US population. We do have a nice size of students from Asian American backgrounds as well as white students and we also have um, Hispanic students or Latino students at Howard University. And so we also want to make sure that we speak to those groups. Interestingly enough, I see often students from um, Indian and Arabic backgrounds in the professional programs more so than in the undergraduate programs. And if they are in the undergraduate programs, they tend to be in the health science STEM fields. And so we also need to be able to speak to that population. While they may not numerically be high, you know, highly represented at Howard University, they would more than likely be encompassed in this Asian group. Okay, so with that being said, let's talk about language. 
So language is embedded within cultural context. It is a social phenomenon, right? We know that human communication is social. You don't develop language by yourself or in a vacuum. You develop language in a social setting. So much of the theories that I have here for education and for learning and teaching are going to be rooted in social cultural theories of learning by Vygotsky's uh, theories of uh, zone of proximal development, for example, um, scaffolding a learner. And so when we talk about the strategies at the end of this presentation, they'll be rooted in those types of theories or theoretical frameworks. Also, language is culture and culture is language. I got this from Language Magazine. I just tried to you know, find the most uh, you know, mainstream uh, source for this. Language and culture have a complex homo homologous relationship. Language is complexity intertwined with culture. We really have to keep this in mind as we proceed through this PowerPoint because you cannot separate language from culture. And by doing so, you're doing a disservice to the people that you work with or the students that you serve in this case. And so at Howard University, our dominant culture is going to be an African-American culture.